Hey, I'm Scott the Media Hoarder. Welcome! And today's box of mystery media comes courtesy of Dave in Stratford, Ontario, Canada. Thanks, Dave. And let's see what we've got here! Ah! It's a whole bunch of cool stuff. We have some quarter-inch reel-to-reel tape, and it says on the box, CBC Canada. Super 8 Films. These look like 50-foot reels, which is about three minutes of film. We've got some cassettes. I've only taken a look at what's on the top layer here, and it looks like there's some interesting stuff. I think a lot of this is from the late 60s or early 70s, possibly from the CBC, which is Canada's national public broadcaster, uh, from out west, western Canada. So let's sort this out. Let me lay out what we've got here, and then we can sort through it together and uh, see if we can put together the story of where this all came from. And I wanted to show you the box. This box is cool. Banquet brand turkey pies, product of USA, 24 eight ounce packages. Keep them frozen, please. Can we date these? Can we figure out when these are from, where they're from? It's inspected by the US Department of Agriculture, don't believe me? Well, there's a sticker right here. There's a label. United States Department of uh, Agriculture, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services, Meat and Poultry Inspection Program, US inspected and passed. Well, it turns out there is an old AV connection here, and it's an RCA connector. Banquet Frozen Foods was, for a time, owned by RCA. The people who brought us color television once decided it was wise to own a TV dinner company. RCA only exists now as a licensed brand name. There is no RCA company making stuff anymore. You can still buy Banquet brand foods. The company is working hard to make the portions larger for underfed American buyers. I, I guess I, I guess we're done here. There's all kinds of uh, schmutz in here. So I can see that uh, there are stickers on here saying regular mount, half frame, stereo, do not mount. I guess different options that somebody could check off in the processing stage. This one is labeled Luke slash Bombers. 0565 says Squamish, which is a place in British Columbia. I noticed that they say charge 16X. Do you think that's a billing thing? 0569, looks like that, it says Anchor. 0571, says Mud Flats. 0572, says Assorted Bus? Bus? Maybe? 0573, Fire, maybe? Something 747? 0574, Calgary, mostly, some airport. 0588, return bass, return bus. 0590, lamp, laup, I love lamp. This one's unnumbered, it says om. Plus we have one orphaned reel, it says 30917. Now, why don't I have footage from these films in this video? Well, they're Super 8 films, which means that you need a Super 8 projector to play them back. Well, I don't have one right now. This just in, I just bought a projector. But even if I did, that's not enough to make a good transfer to the digital domain. The people who do this get paid a lot to do it, and for good reason. It's a service that I'd love to offer because I'll transfer videotapes for people and probably audio tapes, cassettes, reel-to-reel -reel stuff too. Why not film though? It's a special craft. This is important stuff. The resolution on Super 8 film is higher than you might think. You can get a really detailed picture. Not so much the picture of the picture, but the grain of the film, which is one reason why among certain indie film makers, it's very popular stuff still. There are machines that you can buy that 
do the work of a projector without all the harsh grabbing of claws that is involved in moving film through a projector gate in a regular projector at high speed. These machines take advantage of the fact that you don't have to play the film at full speed to capture it. It is, after all, a series of individual pictures. So why not scan a bunch of individual pictures, take a bunch of scans, put them together into a video file. That's what some of these machines do. But the ones that capture up at to 720p, they're pretty expensive. The really good captures that the pros do are up to 4K now. I don't need a 4K capture of a three minute film reel that was found, but I would like to see it. I would like to see it. So let's do some math. It looks like uh, the collection that I have here in this box today has a total of 550 feet of film and at a price of 50 cents per uh, foot of film, it would cost me about $275. Really? That much money? It'll cost $275 to process all this? That's not in my budget right now. But what you can do to help, and it doesn't pay me any money, but it helps you know, the whole thing. Because people like us want to know what's on these, right? We want to know, we want to see. Can you give us a like? Can you give this video a like or a subscription or a like and a subscription or share it with a friend? Do something to, you know, your support is appreciated, is what I'm saying. On to the audio tape, we have a five inch reel, I think this is. Uh, it says Ellen Strew. Ideas, Aldous Huxley, for ideas, Ellen True. Aldous Huxley, famous author, Aldous Huxley? Major, it says human ecology, August 1973. That's two days before I was born. Aldous Huxley, memorial dinner, side one only, poor quality. Agreed, says a note, just not good enough quality of signal to noise ratio. This tape, says it's made for the BBC, specially made for the BBC for listening purposes only. Do I have real two of two? <gasps> what do you know? I do. For listening purposes only. This one says Sunday session. It says Michael and Major mix up. Real two of four Aldous Huxley for CBC. I'm gonna have to look into what Aldous Huxley and the CBC have to do with one another. Rose number four, music, Columbia, Missouri, maybe? 7386, trip to house, description of house, garden, cats, there's an asterisk beside cats. Rose number three, Dennis Preston, somebody's favorite part of England, probably Aldous's, maybe? Mm, school, D.H. Lawrence Pictures in Mountains, picture in mountains? And matinee, part one, November 1969, dub of Gary McKeenan with Vera Lynn. Singer Vera Lynn? There's a great big pile of individual five inch reels with short amounts of tape on each one uh, with minimal labels. They wrote with grease marker, which is a tool you would use in editing. Uh, I might get to these later. Visionary experience, Huxley. Huxley keeps coming up. Huxley keeps coming up in these. Another stack of tapes, these ones are three inch reels, quarter inch tape. Again, labeling is uh, sparse. Uh, some of these are stored, it says end out. It's a razor blade. I used to use these when I was an audio editor at a radio station in Toronto, and we used tape. Yeah, there's a razor blade in here. Cut your tape, use the grease marker to mark where you're gonna cut the tape. Use a nice razor blade like this to give it a slice. And then uh, you tape the two pieces together and that's a splice, that's an edit. Made under license of Philip Morris Inc, owners of the registered trademark. Finally, we have some tapes. Scotch brand, Highlander, low noise, 30 minutes per side tapes. This is Mohammed and Ginsberg from the show Ideas. Very good look at tapes. Kind of like that box too. Uh, that one doesn't have much of a label. Ideas from July 1973. Dennis Preston, we saw that name on a reel-to-reel -reel tape. Ideas from 1973. More. These might be original uh, interviews. Master? Master. I think it says Master. Two sides. Sybil Belfoy? No idea. Uh, ideas from July 1973. 
yet another cassette from Ideas in 1973. And this one is Mayor Willie and Michael McCowan. We have one great big giant reel. This is 2,500 feet of low noise, professional quality mastering tape. So this is from, uh, I don't know. Looks like it's been written over several times. I'm seeing some words on here that look a little French. I don't think the new machine I bought plays these great big reels. So this looks like a dubbing sheet from the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, from July 1973, the same uh, rough date that we saw on a lot of those reels. Uh, so the copy is for Ottolin. Ottolin. Something called Ottolin. Oh yeah, you know what? I wonder if that goes with this, because there are two dubs here from the BBC that say Ottolin from July 13th, 1973. Okay, so then these tapes go with this dubbing sheet. So, Mr. S. Cresswell recorded this. We have in cues and out cues. She came to visit us. Writer Catherine Mansfield. Now to answer you, Ottolin, she said, or he said, Hmm, looks like they used a typewriter and carbon paper and everything. Nowhere have I ever worked that was so detailed in how they tracked their tapes. But then again, we have tapes now from 1973. And do I have a, <laughs> do I have tapes from the majority of work I've ever done in radio? No! What gets recorded gets remembered. So, what have we learned from the visual inspection? Most of these tapes seem connected with a summer 1973 episode of a CBC radio show called Ideas. Ideas started in 1965, and it's still on the air. Wikipedia describes it as a scholarly radio documentary show. That episode appears built around Aldous Huxley, the author of Brave New World, who died in 1963. So, I looked for Aldous Huxley 1973. That led me to this 1973 book called Aldous Huxley, a biography. And look who wrote that, Sybil Bedford. And we have this tape that I read as Sybil Belfoy. I think they're the same person. Ellen Strew? No idea, I might be reading that wrong. Columbia MS is Mississippi, not Missouri. Dennis Preston, the most prominent one is this gentleman, who is seen to be the major proponent of perceptual dialectology. His five-point approach to the study has been a benchmark for the advancement of the field, I'm told. Then, I found a 2LP set of an interview with Aldous Huxley from the 1960s. Interviewer is Dennis Preston. How about the D.H. Lawrence tape? Lawrence and Huxley have a history rich enough for scholarly articles to have been written about them. Check. Now on to Ottolin, and if you're a Huxley scholar and this is all obvious and well-known stuff, please forgive me, I don't know any of this. Okay, Lady Ottolin Morell. Ooh, she was really something. Aristocrat, society hostess, and patron, she died in 1938, so unless the BBC got her via time machine or something, it must be someone talking about her. So that's enough evidence for me that the quarter-inch and compact cassette tapes are the ingredients and possible outcome of a scholarly documentary from 1973 about Aldous Huxley. Next step for this batch of mystery media? Make some selections and listen to what's here. If you're a Huxley historian or special agent of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, tell me what you want to know about these tapes. And I'll look into maybe getting these Super 8 reels transferred. That's really cool. Thanks for taking this trip with me, and I hope you'll be back another time as we go through more of these tapes and films and more tapes and discover more libraries of unheard and unseen stuff that was on its way to the trash. Please support what I do. Give the video a like or a subscribe or a follow or whatever indicates your support on whatever platform you're on. And I'll keep making stuff. I'm Scott the Media Hoarder. Thank you. <laughs>